Amen. Certainly we honor the spirit of the Lord. We thank God for being here uh, on today. God is just worthy to be praised. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Amen. He's worthy of all that we can say, amen, and do. Uh, and we just give him praise on today. We worship him. We adore him. Uh, and we give him honor. Uh, we just, again, uh, thank God for his word because it's in his word that we find uh, all that we need to, to live in this life, all that we need, amen, to make it through these uh, days and times in which we find ourselves in. Yes. But uh, on, on today, uh, I, I just uh, I know within my spirit that there's uh, been a time in our lives that Jesus stepped in. That Jesus uh, came and he uh, did what was necessary to do. Uh, we've been through uh, difficult times uh, as each of us have in our lives, but uh, Jesus was still yet there. He was still yet there to, to step in, still yet there to uh, give us uh, peace and calm and, and strength in the midst of, of what we've uh, been going through. Uh, and uh, I, I don't have to ask the question because it would be a rhetorical question because I know uh, that some of us uh, remember the time when he stepped in. Some of us remember the time when uh, uh, at that moment and at that given uh, hour that we needed him and we wanted him to, to do the things that we asked for him to do, that he stepped in. Uh, and somebody once said he steps in right on time. Uh, one person said he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And, and I believe that. Uh, I, I do remember uh, the time where uh, Jesus stood uh, in the midst of some situations that I was going through, uh, things in which he uh, did for me that I couldn't do for myself. Uh, I, I couldn't get myself out of certain things. And, and I, 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 I knew that uh, I had to call on him. I knew that I had to lean, amen, on him to, to strengthen me and to uh, uh, send uh, some peace and some calm uh, to the things that was going on in my life. Um, our foundation scripture, I just want you to uh, uh, have it uh, while I'm going, uh, is John. Uh, we're going to be coming from John, the 20th chapter. And uh, our foundation Foundation scriptures are going to be coming from uh, verse 19 and verse 26, uh, uh, but we're going to read uh, from 19 to 29. Uh, it's a, a short uh, thing that uh, took place here or uh, incident in which we are, are going to uh, uh, see. But uh, as I was saying before, uh, we have to understand that Christ uh, at times, uh, he uh, had to come in in the midst of what we were uh, going through and he had to speak uh, a peace unto our situation. Amen. He had to send uh, some type of calm. He had to send some type of uh, reassurance that we were going to make it through whatever we were suffering. Uh, and uh, we, we find that, that even at times when we feel like we're overloaded and, and bogged down with the world and, and the cares of this world and situations and worries and fears, that it takes for Christ to step in and speak uh, a word to our situation, to, to bring forth uh, the things in which we need him to do at that particular moment. Yeah. Now, some of us may be like uh, uh, Tom uh, in, in the story that we're going to talk about, uh, also uh, known as Didymus, we, some of us may be like him that say, you know, unless I can see it or unless I, I can touch it or, or whatever, I'm not going to believe. But uh, I, I know that in the midst of those times when we have doubt, when we have worry and we have, uh, well, God, I just can't see it and I don't know how it's going to work out. Uh, and we get that uh, Didymus or Thomas uh, spirit uh, within us. We have to understand that Jesus. Jesus is still in the midst. Amen. So the title of this uh, message on today is Jesus stood in the midst. That's the title of the lesson. Jesus yeah. stood in the midst. And, and we can go uh, a thousand different ways with this, but, but uh, we're going to go uh, the way in which uh, the Lord gave to me on today. Subtitle would be peace be unto you. So Jesus stood in the midst, sub would be peace be unto you. All right, so as we uh, go, we have to understand our foundation of scripture, or the scripture is coming from uh, the book of John, one of the gospels uh, here. Now, we first have to understand a little bit about the author. The author of, of this John is the one who wrote John and the first, um, uh, second and third John. And he's that one that was with Christ and uh, one of those disciples that was uh, a follower of him. 
that was uh, uh, picked and, 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 you know, was, was there when, when Christ went through uh, most of the things that uh, he went through. He was that one that was there at the cross uh, where Christ uh, was just crucified and uh, he uh, had been hung on this cross for, for our sins. He was that one that followed closely by uh, Christ. He was also that one that uh, when all the other disciples were, were somewhere else, he was nearer to the cross, you know, because on when we get to the, the, the seven last word type things, we understand that it was John that was there with a few of those Marys and, and Jesus' mother. And he, he told him, behold thy mother, son, behold thy uh, uh, mother, and mother, behold thy son. We understand that he was that one that was there. And, and John C. writes this in a, a perspective that he understands uh, who Jesus is and he understands how Jesus is uh, in relationship to, to us. Now, uh, John, like I said, he gives uh, a little different account than some of the other ones. He, he didn't, you know, go throughout in, in you know, a great detail with a whole bunch of stuff. But John uh, captured the essence of what Christ uh, represented. Now, we, we look here and I'm going to give you some background and I'm going to give you some uh, uh, background as leading up to this verse 19. So just uh, bear with me for uh, a little bit here. Uh, again, we, we find that these Jews was, was coming to take Christ. They were coming and they uh, tried him and they uh, captured him uh, when he was with his disciples at night. Uh, they came and grabbed Christ and they took him away and they took, brought him before these Jews. And they brought him before the priests and uh, the Sadducees and those ones there. And we find that uh, even in the midst of, of that, Christ is uh, on, quote unquote, their particular trial. And Christ is being spat on. He's being hit. He's being, you know, uh, uh, told that he wasn't who he claimed to be. We find uh, that there was one by the name of, uh, I think, Caiaphas, who, who uh, said, you know, know what we're going to do. We're going to uh, send him uh, to Pilate and we're going to have Pilate try him because what Christ is, what this uh, Jesus is talking about is, is a treason. What Jesus is talking about goes against uh, the uh, rule and the, the rule of the land, claiming that he is the son of God and claiming that him and God was one. So they didn't like Christ for that specific reason. So they said, we're going to send him to Pilate. Trust me, stay with me with this background for a minute because it's going to be key. They, they send him to Pilate and they tell uh, Pilate, well, look, this, this Jesus is, quote unquote, a traitor to us. He's uh, saying things that, that we don't believe. He's blaspheming. He's doing this against the kingdom. And if you allow it to continue to happen, it, he's going to spoil what the Romans and this, uh, the uh, laws of the land is going to be. So, so they begin to craft a way to get Christ in trouble by the... Uh, Pilate. So Pilate then uh, receives Christ and, and he's talking to him and he's asking him, you know, uh, what's going on and this, that, and the other. And he, uh, of course, tries to exercise power over Christ. And Christ said, look, you can't do anything except it's given to me by, uh, by uh, my father in heaven. You don't have any power or, or anything like that. Then we get down to where Pilate's wife has a dream and she's dreaming this dream and it must have disturbed her so that she went to him and said, look, you need to leave this guy named Jesus alone. You need to let him go, set him free. But again, Pilate under the, uh, uh, I would say under the influence of the Jews, they, they begin to uh, bother him. They begin to, you know, still press upon him. So Pilate then goes and he says, no, what? I'm going to send this Jesus to Herod. I'm going to let Herod try him. I'm going to let Herod deal with this. He's the one who's supposed to be dealing with matters along this lines when it comes to uh, you Jews, because I don't want to disrupt anything uh, uh, against Herod and against the uh, kingdom uh, uh, at this time. So he sends Jesus. Jesus, Pilate sends Jesus to Herod, and then Jesus uh, is before Herod, and Jesus don't say anything to Herod. Herod begins to question him and begins to say all kinds of things. Show me a miracle. Show me something that you can do uh, uh, to prove that you are the Son of God. Prove that you are God. And Jesus didn't do anything. He didn't. He kept silent. The Bible said that's where we get. He didn't say a mumbling word. He didn't say anything to Herod. So Herod says, "Know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send you back to Pilate." 
Pilate and let Pilate deal with this situation. It's key that we get all this background because once we get into 19, you're going to understand. Uh, so so we, we find that he's uh, Christ is uh, sent back to, to Pilate and then Pilate is, is saying, you know what? Because I understand that this crowd is so thirsty for blood. He said, I know there's a, a, a day and a time that comes where we uh, let a, a malefactor go and, and we let this malefactor go. And and it's, it's you know, we release them, even if they did whatever they did, murder, killed, still robbed, whatever. He said, I know we release a malefactor during this time. So they, uh, he, he puts Christ and he puts Barabbas up and he says, I have to let uh, one of these uh, people go. He said, would you uh, accept me letting uh, 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 Barabbas go, the, the one who is a known murderer and killer, a thief, robber and all this, a wicked person? Or he said, would you, would you release uh, this Christ who I found no fault in him? He was like, which one do you want? And they said, release unto us Barabbas. They, they want Barabbas because they want Barabbas to be released in Christ to be crucified. They said crucify Christ, crucify Jesus. And uh, he, he's looking at them. He washes his hand. He said, all right, uh, I'm going to do what needs to be done and, and submit Christ unto them. It's key that we understand this because those uh, thirsty blood, uh, thirsty uh, Jews was those ones that uh, falsely accused Christ. They, they got people to lie. They got people to say that he did X, Y, and Z. Uh, and they even got a Judas to portray him uh, for 30 pieces of silver. And these it was the same Jews that's going to be screaming out at this time, crucify him. Yeah. So Pilate does what uh, the crowd says because they were bloodthirsty. They wanted uh, 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 Christ because of what he stood for. He stood for everything that uh, was, was true and everything that was uh, true of God. And they didn't like it because he exposed who they were. Mm, that's something there. But we find that they crucify, say crucify Christ. Uh, Barabbas is set free. Christ is now being crucified or, or, or uh, led up to this uh, particular moment. And uh, he's now crucified on the cross. Now we have to uh, speed this thing up and, and, and rush down this, you know, road of antiquity real quick. So, so you really understand uh, uh, where we're going to in this uh, 20th chapter. We find that, that Christ is there and he's now been crucified and he's now placed uh in a, a, a borrowed tomb. Now we have to see this here too. When uh, Christ was uh, on his way to be crucified, those disciples that he picked was those ones that ran and hid themselves in their houses. They ran and hid themselves away. But there was one that stood strong. There was one by the name of John that followed even to the uh, brink of Golgotha's Hill and watched Christ be crucified because he was there standing when Christ said uh, to uh, uh, his mother, he said, woman, behold, thy son, son, behold thy mother. He was right there giving uh, John the one the Bible says that Jesus loved, uh, the disciple that he loved. He gave his mother unto him for protection because he was right there. But then we find that uh, John is there witnessing Christ's uh, death. He's now crucified. Then we get Joseph of Amethyst come and says to uh, the rulers, can we take his body down and can we place his body into this borrowed tomb that I have? And he finds that they take his uh, body down, wrap him in clothes. We know the story. We're going to preach it on Easter Sunday as well. We, we know the story. They wrapped him in uh, 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 garbs and, and uh, cloth and linen. And they, they placed a napkin over his face and, and wrapped him and put him in there with spices and all that. They sealed up the uh, tomb. And we find that Christ is, is dead. And he's dead for three days. And, and then we find that uh, uh, at this particular moment that uh, Joseph has placed him in this tomb tomb and to further uh, solidify that Christ wasn't going to rise again according to the Jews they sealed the sepulcher they sealed it they, they made sure that it was sure that that wouldn't nobody be able to get in there stay with me just a little bit longer and we're going to get to you uh, we, we find uh, that uh, Christ is there two uh, stations of guard is set up uh, beside the tomb to watch over to make sure that nobody goes in there but then uh, the, the, the story goes uh, a, a little uh, further that uh, when when uh, the moment and day came that Christ was in there for, for three days uh, is where we pick up our, our story at in uh, 
verses uh, 20 through uh, verse chapter 20 verses 1 through uh, 18 we find uh, something is taking place here uh, Christ is 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 there with uh, uh, in this uh, tomb and on the first day of the uh, year of uh, the first day of that uh, week we find that he's getting ready to rise so let's read let's read 19 let's read verse 19 down to uh, verse 21 uh, 29 and then we'll go back here so the Bible says this in verse 19 John 20 20. It says, then uh, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when uh, the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, peace be unto you. Verse 20, it says, and when he had uh, so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father has uh, sent me, even so I send you. And when, it, uh, when he had said this, his brethren, uh, his, he breathed on them, sorry. When he said this, he breathed on them uh, and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Then it goes on and says, uh, Whosoever sins, ye remit. Then uh, they are remitted unto them. Uh, and whomsoever sin is retained, he said, they are retained. Yeah. Verse 24, it says, But uh, Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, not uh, with them when Jesus came. The other disciples there, uh, therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But uh, he said unto them, Except I see... Uh, Except I see his hands and the print of his nails, and he said, and put my finger in the print of the nails, uh, he said, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Come on, bear with me. Three more scriptures. It says uh, in verse 26, and after eight days, again, uh, his disciples were within uh, and Thomas was with them. And then came Jesus, uh, the door being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Verse 27, then uh, said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. He said, uh, and reach hither thy hand and thrust into my side. He said, but uh, he said, be not fair, uh, faithless. He said, but believing. Yeah. Verse 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my, my Lord, my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. But he said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. All right, so let's get into this thing real quick. So when we when we look at this here, and we start off with uh, the, the it starts off with uh, uh, in the same day, then the same day, uh, we have to uh, understand what same day it was. It was the same day that Christ had just rose from the dead. It was the same day that when you go back to chapter uh, twenty, verse one, where it says, "On the first day of the week, come of Mary Magdalene and some other women that was coming uh, with her." to uh, put uh, spices and things uh, around Christ's body again to, to keep the smell and to keep it smelling uh, sweet. We find that it's, it's that same day that uh, that Joseph uh, had, uh, uh, had placed Christ uh, into that tomb and on that third day Christ is about to, to rise from the dead and, and we find that it's that same day when Christ rose that these disciples had hid themselves into uh, this uh, room and, and they hid themselves uh, at, at this particular moment uh, because they was fearful that they was going to receive the same punishment that Christ received. They was fearful that that they were uh, going to uh, find themselves in uh, the same predicament. But the Bible lets us know that in that first day, the same day in which uh, we see Christ appear before them, that same day, that first day of the week, we find that Mary goes down there, Mary Magdalene, she's going to put more spices down and, and, and then we find that she says, well, how are we going to uh, uh, roll the stone away on the sepulcher to do what we need to do? And in some of the other gospels, and like I said, John, he didn't play around with a whole bunch of this and that's in there. He just went right to the heart of the moment. But in some of the other gospels, it lets us know that uh, there was an earthquake that happened on the way to the sepulcher. There was a rumbling of the ground that took place and the stone was already rolled away when they had got there. When Mary Magdalene gets there, she she then, uh, fearful of, of, of what has happened, she witnessed the stone rolls away. She then runs and go tells the disciples. 
back, she runs and tells Peter and two other disciples. She says, hey, look, I went to the sepulcher and the stone was rolled away. I don't know what that means, but I believe y'all need to get down there and see what's going on in case someone has stole him away. So she goes down there and she talks to them and Peter then takes flight and he starts to run. And then two other disciples, the Bible says, when you read down uh, in uh, the fourth and the fifth verse, it says two other disciples was with him. Now one kept pace with Peter. One was, you know, jogging along with Peter. and But the other one ran faster than the other two. Uh, Peter and that other disciple, he stoops in and he looks down and, and, and he gets there and he's like, I, I don't want to go in. I don't want to uh, see what, what's going on in here. Finally, Peter and them runs onto the scene. Peter was brave enough uh, to peek in and look in. But then Peter said, know what? I'm going to go in and see for myself. I'm going to go in and see if our Lord and Savior is still in here. So he goes in, the Bible says, still some background, y'all. We're going to get to y'all. Uh, we, we go. Peter goes down and, and he looks in and the Bible said Peter just saw his linen clothes and a napkin. Peter saw that uh, folded off to the side and, and, and we understand the, the, the meaning and the principle behind that. When you fold the napkin, it means that you're coming back. It means that you, you only stepped away for a little short period of a time. Not meaning that Jesus was coming back to lay down his life again because he paid the price once and for all. It just meant that he's coming back one day and he's coming back to receive us unto himself. But as the story goes, Peter is looking in and he sees these clothes and, and everything. It's key that we understand what Peter sees. Because Peter sees just the burial clothes that's sitting off to the side. He don't see anything else. Peter then leaves out the other uh, disciple who he looks in and then he sees uh, that, that nothing's in there. He just sees the, uh, uh, an empty tomb. They then leave and go back uh, uh, home or go back to uh, the places. Uh, the Bible said they went back to their homes uh, and, 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 and probably locked themselves away then. But the Bible said that Mary Magdalene stayed there. She stayed there. And, and she's weeping and she's crying and you can find that in verse 11 she's weeping and she's crying and she's uh, sitting there and, and, and she's wondering what happened and, and the Bible said that she's seen a guard or who she perceived was a guard and uh, she's looking at him and she's saying look uh, just tell me where you laid him just tell me where y'all put him uh, and, and I will take him away myself but she was uh, able enough to muster up enough strength that when she got down and she stooped and she looked in the sepulcher she said the Bible says she saw something different. Right. Mary Magdalene saw two angels. Right. She saw one angel sitting at his head and one angel sitting at his feet. And then she uh, began to uh, look at him. And the Bible said they was clothed in white raiment or white garment or white linen. And they began to speak to her. And then she came out of the sepulcher and she sees a man who she perceives is the gardener. Yeah. She sees a man who she thinks that was just there tending the, uh, the, the, uh, the garden or the fields that was around. But she had no idea it was was Christ because when she said where did you lay my master where did y'all hide him away let me just have him and I'll take him away Jesus said a uh, daughter he begins to talk to her and he calls her by name she didn't realize it's Christ and she calls him rabbi meaning master she said master uh, I believe and, and I just believe that that when she saw him she was ready to hug on him she was ready to embrace him up but Jesus said hold up Mary you cannot touch me don't touch me because uh, I haven't a ascended unto my father yet. Oh, we're going to get to our story in a minute. He said, I haven't ascended to my father yet. So, so handle me not. Don't touch me not. And, and he said, but I have an assignment for you to do. He said, I want you to go tell my disciples, uh, go tell Peter and them that they shall see me ascend unto my father and unto your father and unto my God and your God and tell them that I shall come and meet them. Yeah. The story goes on and, and she runs and she tells the disciples everything that Christ told her. And now we find that they are now assembling themselves and has gathered themselves in a locked room. They are now in the locked room where we get our foundation scripture from. We find that uh, Mary uh, seen something different that uh, 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 Peter didn't see. Peter seen the clothes that, that Christ was in. But Mary seen the angels and she spoke to Christ. But then Christ is now about to appear to 
struggle for himself in the midst of his disciples. That's why we get in the same day. It was the same day that he resurrected on that early Sunday morning from being in that grave for, for uh, three days and three nights. We find that on that third uh, day that Christ is risen and he's now in the same evening. It's now nighttime because it was early in the morning when he rose, but now it's nighttime when he came to uh, deal with his disciples. Being uh, the first day of the week, the Bible said, they were shut in a, a door. The door was shut and disciples was the symbol therein and it says in Jesus uh, and Jesus came and stood in the midst and said unto them peace be unto you yes. which is the title of our message on today uh, Jesus stood in the midst and, and that's going to mean so much more to us when we get to the end of this story how Jesus stood in the midst of everything that we were going through yes. uh, Jesus stood in the midst of the things in which we found ourselves in yes. but we, we got to get finished with this right here we find that it, on this uh, scripture here that Jesus has now materialized himself in the midst of this room. He is now standing. It didn't say he opened the door. It didn't say that, you know, uh, he came through the roof. It, it didn't say any of that. It just said Jesus stood in the midst. And when he was standing there, he had to calm their spirit because I know that they thought he was a ghost. He said, peace be unto you. And then he goes on and he says, I have, he said, I'm showing you my hands. I'm showing you my body and, and, and my side and all that. He, he's basically telling them I am the Lord I'm, I'm the one who was just crucified and I told you that I was going to rise on the third day he, I, I, I told you that they may try to destroy or tear down this I have power to tear down this temple but I have power to build it up again and he's standing in the midst of them and then in verse 21 Jesus says unto them one more time peace be unto you sometimes it takes uh, uh, for us to really understand that God is trying to uh, send peace in the midst that we're going through we can too busy worrying about it. We're too busy focusing on it. I can see it, God. I, I see it be frontless before me and I, it, it's just too heavy and too worrisome for me. And Jesus said, look, I sent peace to that situation, but you still worrying about it. So he had to then say peace one more time to them and tell them, look, peace be unto you. I'm, 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 I'm calming what was going down. He said, but now uh, uh, my father has sent me. And he said, even I now have to send you. But see, Christ didn't send them out any kind of way. Christ then, the Bible said, he then uh, looked at them and he breathed on them. Gave them their second win as I preached before. He gave them a second win and the Bible said, he told them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. So you need the Holy Ghost to fight off some things in which they had to go through. We need the Holy Ghost to fight off some things that the enemy is trying to do. We need the Holy Ghost to be in us uh, because if you don't have the Holy Ghost, the enemy is going to uh, uh, beat you to and fro. The enemy is going to destroy you. He's going to rob you and he will kill you if you don't have the Holy Spirit down within you. So Jesus was equipping them to be able to do the things in which God wanted them to do. Uh, to go and preach and, and set free the captives and, and forgive, forgive sin and all those things. He had to breathe on them to give them the strength. But he stood in the midst of them because he wanted them to see that he was still yet alive. We serve a God that is not dead. He is still alive. He's alive in every Every last one of our situation, he's alive in everything that, that we do in our life. But uh, as the story uh, goes on, as Jesus begins to talk to them and he begins to tell them, uh, uh, I want you to do this and do that. Then uh, for some reason, he's off the scene again. Then it says uh, 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 Thomas came on him in verse 24. Thomas, the one named Didymus, uh, one of the 12, he's coming and Thomas is there. And, and we call him Doubting Thomas because uh, he, he began to doubt. He began to doubt that, that Christ was, was in the midst of the, the disciples that was there. But we find that uh, he said, look, unless I can feel the prints of the nails, unless I can feel the side where the spear went in, he said, I'm not believing anything that you guys say. He, he, and, it, and it just uh, uh, puzzles me how uh, Thomas could doubt so hard when Christ was walking with them for three and a half years and he witnessed the miracles that Christ did. He witnessed Christ bringing Lazarus back 
to death, uh, back to life. He witnessed Christ uh, uh, healing the, the damsels and this ones and that ones and, and restoring. And, and, and Thomas is saying, look, unless I can see it, that's just like some of us today. Unless we can see God move, we're not going to believe. Unless we can see God uh, fix the, the situation or, or move in the way that we want him to move, that we just won't believe. But Christ, uh, as soon as after Thomas got done saying his little spill, the Bible said after eight days later, Christ then appears. Uh, the disciples were again in the midst of this locked room and they said the door was shut. See, it's clear that we understand the door was shut. And it says being closed and shut uh, stood. He said Christ stood in the midst of the of them and it said and he said again peace be unto you now he was coming not for the disciples sake but he was coming for uh, thomas's sake he was coming because uh, thomas was one of the 12 that, that he had handpicked so so he wanted to show himself to thomas as well he wanted thomas to fully understand that in the midst of what you're saying that you want to feel me you want to touch me because i am lord and i was raised with all power in my my hand and that i have power over life and death and the earth and and in the heavens and all that he said I heard you when you said Thomas uh, that you wanted to feel my side and, and that you wanted to do this and at that moment he materialized himself again in a locked door what where am I going with that and this is comforting to every last one of us when we lock ourselves away in the midst of what we're going through God is still yet there when we lock ourselves away and we allow the word to try to the, the, the world to try to find us up and, and lock us into a place where we can't move but God is still yet there when we lock ourselves away and we don't understand that God can get where we uh, uh, where we are no matter where we are we, 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 we have to get a reassurance or encouragement that God can stand in the midst of, of right where we locked ourselves away because trust and believe the enemy has locked some of y'all up mm, some people up the enemy has locked you up in a sense uh, and has uh, uh, tried to uh, keep you shut up and shut away from really receiving what God has for you and Jesus said I'm still in the midst he said I understand that you're locked away he said but now I'm going to stand in the midst of you and I'm going to send peace unto you and I'm going to give you what you need in your situation I thank God for coming in one day I thank God for blessing me one day when he stood in the midst for me when he came and, and stood and stepped in right when I needed him to when it means that he stood in the midst means he stepped in so when God stepped into my situation, he began to fight my battle for me. When God stepped in and proved that he was who he said he was, all I had to do was sit back and relax and let him take care of it. When God stepped in, all I had to do was understand that now I'm at peace because I don't have to worry about it. Too many of us today are worried about things that the enemy is trying to lock us away with. And Jesus is saying, I don't care how much chains, I don't care how many doors get locked. He said, I am able to unlock every lock. He said, I am the master key of master keys. He said, I am the opener of all doors. He said, I can go into the midst of the doors. And Christ stood in the midst of that room at that time. And as he's standing in the midst of the room, he said, uh, Thomas, let me deal with you first. He said, feel the nail uh, where my nails and that the hands marks were. He said, Thomas, feel where they pierced me in my side. He said, I want you to fully understand who and what is standing before you. And we we find that uh, Jesus did that for Thomas sake but then as we go on we have to understand something that when Jesus stood in the midst of them Jesus was letting them know that I don't care what you are going through I don't care how much stuff got you locked away he said I am able to stand in the midst did not Christ stand in the midst of your life when you needed him to stand in the most did not he step in and all of us can attest to when him stepped in when he died on that Calvary's cross. He stood in the midst of our position. He stood in the midst of where we should have been. We should have been crucified for the sins that we committed. We should have been dead and gone and cast into that place called hell. But Christ said, I'm going to stand in the midst. I'm going to exchange my life for your life. I'm going to pay the price on that rugged cross. I'm going to exchange what God has 
required of me. A, a lamb without spot or blemish. A, a place of, uh, of sacrifice worthy of God. And he stood in the midst of you and me. He didn't allow us to be uh, uh, overtaken by the enemy. And he gave us the next part of the Trinity. He gave us the Holy Spirit. Because when he did ascend, because he told them in this chapter, he said, Mary, go tell them I'm going to ascend unto my Father. When he did ascend, just before he was about to ascend into heaven, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Christ said, I am going, but I'm going to ask the Father not to take you out of this world. He said, I'm going to send what we call the Comforter. I'm going to send the third part of my Trinity. He said, and he's going to come down and be with you. He's going to empower you to do the things that you need him to do. Hallelujah in this place. But Jesus stood in the midst. I'm reminded of a few other stories where Jesus stood in the midst. Was it not Jesus walking through the town one day? And he stood in the midst of a crowd of people. Let me relate it to you first. Because I like what Jesus said here in this 29th verse. He said, Thomas, I'm appearing unto you so you can see me for yourself. He said, but blessed are they that have not seen me. Look at yourself and say, I am blessed. Oh, come on mean it in your spirit because what Christ has just spoke here in this word he said blessed are they who have not seen me none of us here today say we seen Christ like Thomas seen him none of us today say we seen Christ like the apostles seen him but Christ said blessed are they who have not seen me he said for ye shall believe he said yet have they believe so we have to understand that we are the blessed people in which Christ is talking about right here he said, bless are they who have not seen. But let me get back to where I was going. We have to understand something here. That Christ did this in the midst of what he, uh, they were going through. But I like that Christ stood in the midst of a crowd one day. And the Bible lets me know that the woman with the issue of blood said, I see him standing in the midst. I see him walking through this town. And all I got to do is get up enough faith. I tried all that I could try in my life. I spent all my money I could spend. But I understood that Christ was standing here. And she reached out and touched the hem of his garment. Hallelujah in this place. The Bible said that the issue of her blood dried up. Everything that was wrong in her life corrected. Hallelujah in here. When Jesus stands in the midst, situations have to change. When Jesus stands in the midst, life issues have to flee away. When Jesus stand in the midst, things have to happen in your life. But I'm reminded of another story. When Jesus was standing still and when Jesus stood in the midst, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was going through their fiery furnace, some of you here today have been going through a fiery furnace situation. The enemy has turned up the heat, has turned it up hotter than what you recognize. Hallelujah in here. But the Bible lets me know that when the king looked in and he saw the three that was standing inbound, he said, did we not throw three inbound? He said, but I see four in there. And the one that's standing in the midst of this fire looked like the son of the most high God. Looked like Jesus Christ. So Jesus was standing in the midst of the fire. So whether you got it, you're locked behind the door. Jesus is in the midst. Whether you have an issue in your body. Jesus is in the midst. Whether you're going through a fiery furnace. Jesus is in the midst. Whether they cast you in a den of lions. Jesus is in the midst. Hallelujah in this place. Hallelujah in here. No matter what you're going through in life. Jesus in the midst of your very problem. All you have to do is trust and believe. All you have to do is doubt not like Thomas. And know that God, I've seen you for myself. I may not have seen you in physical form. But I feel you all around me. I feel your touch all over my life. I know right now that you're standing in the midst. I do I have two or three witnesses here today. That understand that God is standing in the midst. That understand that he is right here with us right now. Oh hallelujah in this place. Don't say it if you don't mean it. I feel him standing in the midst. I feel his anointing overshadowing me. I feel his presence all around me. And thank you Jesus for standing in the 
mess. Yeah. Hallelujah here. Yeah. He stood in the mess on that damn calvary. Yeah. And he's still standing right now. Yeah. He is still yet alive right now. Yeah. He is still sitting on the right hand of the Father. Yeah. Doing what he said he was going to do. Yeah. Continue to fight on our behalf. Yeah. Hallelujah in here. Yeah. Why? Because the accuser is still yet out there. Yeah. The accuser is still yet trying to devour. Yeah. He's trying to kill us. Yeah. The Bible said he's like a Roman lion. Yeah. Seeking in whom he may devour. Yeah. But thank you Jesus. Yeah. I have my Daniel spirit in me. Yeah. That even in the midst of those Roman lions. Yeah. That Jesus is still in the midst. Yeah. Telling those lions to be still. Yeah. Telling them to shut up your mouths. Yeah. Hallelujah in this place. Yeah. Oh I got to close this thing here. Yeah. But Jesus is standing in the midst right now. In the midst of the pain, in the midst of life situations, he is still yet there. But thank you, Jesus. You said, peace be unto me. Hallelujah in this place. I'm talking about the peace that settles storms. I'm talking about the peace that calms seas. I'm talking about the peace that shut wind up. Hallelujah in this place. Do you need some peace in your life? Do you need the lying tongues to be ceased? talking about to be gone? Do you need the worries of life being cast away? Do you need peace on today? When Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples, he said, peace be unto you. Hallelujah in here. Sometimes we're trembling in our bodies. Sometimes we're wracked with fear. But Christ said, all you gotta do is trust and believe. Hallelujah in this place. He said, peace be unto you. I don't know who needs to hear that on today. Things seem like they're unraveling. Things seem like it's attacked every which way. But God is still in the midst. And he said, peace to your storm. Peace to your situation. He said, peace unto you right now. Hallelujah in this place. Do I have some people right now that don't mind praising God? Don't mind giving God some glory. Just imagine right now. Just imagine right now that our Lord and Savior is standing right by you. Just imagine the Spirit being right near you. Hallelujah in this place. You ought to reach out and grab the hold of Jesus and let Jesus send peace to your situation. I don't know about you, but I feel him on my right side. He's my right hand man. I feel him right now on me. Hallelujah in here. I can't help but find peace. I can't help but find joy. I can't help but find strength. Hallelujah in this place. Do I have some folks today that will give him your best praise? That will give him the highest praise? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank him right now. Thank him for standing in the midst. Thank him for being right there. Thank him for being right here, right now. Hallelujah in here. Jesus. Glory to his name. <laughs> Glory to his name. Somebody needed to hear that on today. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's what you're going through or what you're going to go through. Hallelujah. We need Jesus in the midst. Hallelujah. We need his spirit yes, yes, yes. in the midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he can send peace yes, to the situation. Yes, Lord. Peace and only yes, God. he can do. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now, God, for your word. Lord, we thank you for being here right now. Yes, God. Being in this place, God. Yes, yes, God. Lord, we know that you can be everywhere at all times. Yes, God. So, God, we thank you for being beside us right yes, now. Yes, 
Lord, we now ask for you to send yet peace into the situations. Lord, whatever it is, dear God, we ask that you send peace. God, we just thank you right now because we believe that you've already done it. Lord, but we just ask, dear God, that you would just continue to do it, God. In the name of Jesus. Bless your people, dear God. Every situation, dear God. Every problem, every dilemma, dear God. Everything in which we're going through, God. Lord, you know all about it. Lord, so we ask, dear God, that you would just begin to work it out. God, send healing where healing is needed. Send peace where peace is needed. Dear God, we ask that you send finances where finances are needed. Dear God, we ask that you fix the minds, dear God, where mental health is being an issue. God, we ask that you do it right now, God. Lord, we know that you're able. We know that you can do it, God. Lord, for you said you rose with all power in your hands. So, God, we ask that you do it, God. Lord, but allow us to feel your presence. Allow us to feel your, your spirit, dear God. Lord, and we just thank you right now, Lord. God, we ask that you will go where we can't go. To the places of the people who have asked for prayer, God. To the hospital rooms, dear God. The prison walls, dear God. The sick beds, God. We ask that you go to where they are right now. God, and send peace in the midst. So, God, we just ask you to do this on today. God, believing that you shall do it, God. Lord, for your word said, all we have to do is believe we shall receive. Lord, we believe on today. Lord, we have faith knowing that you're able. So, God, we just thank you. We praise you. So, God, we ask that you look on the unsaved right now. Touch them, dear God. Allow them to understand, God, that you are with them. Allow them to understand, God, that you're ready to step in at any given moment. To change their life, change their walk and their destiny. Lord, save them, dear God. You said all they have to do is call on your name. All they have to do is believe, dear God, what you have done. And they shall be saved. So, God, we ask that you save them. Lord, and we just thank you. And we praise you in advance for that soul that's being saved. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Come on, look at somebody and tell them you love them. Come on, mean it in your heart. Jesus.